You guys should share this video and have this conversation. Educate yourself. Asians are f***. What's going on everybody? David Fung from the Fung Bros here. Now there are a ton of hot button issues going on in America right now, but very few of them, if any at all, seem to involve Asians. Today we're gonna be asking people do they care, what they think, and what we should do. Let's find out. In most or all mainstream American national debates, Asians are left out of the discussion. Agree or disagree? Sure, agree. Agree. Most definitely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. I would agree. I would say they stay under the radar. Agree. Agree. Definitely agree. Yeah. Yep. Why is that? I feel like it's partly our fault because a lot of Asians, you know, stick together. Yeah, you guys are a lot more tight knit. Our community is not that strong compared to like black people, like white people. We as a community, uh, Asian Americans, we're just like very comfortable where we're at. It's like, you know, a vicious circle. Like we're not part of the conversation, so we're not, we choose not to be in that conversation. Asians tend to not speak up, so it's partly our fault. I would say like we're not really discriminating against like hugely in this country. I don't really have motivation to like fight for my rights and stuff like that. Asians are still treated as foreign people. No matter how long we've been in America, there's always this feeling that we're not really a part of it. Some Americans don't think that Asians are part of like the American fabric that makes up America. There aren't um, that many kind of role models to look up to. Asians have always been viewed as like this like silent mi minority. Uh, perhaps if you ha have heard of the term model minority. The majority of society like venerates the Asian community. Like it's like the model minority. Asians are kind of seen as the model minority. So they're kind of left out of discussions because they don't fit in the minority bucket, nor do they fit in the white bucket. The original the conception of Asian Americans as being a model minority was to keep black people in line. Asians aren't viewed as threatening as maybe African Americans or, or Latinos. These people come in here and they do the thing, they're quiet, they keep to themselves, they assimilate. Why can't you? It's kind of like the 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 frog in the in the boiling water, where like if you slowly heat up the water, the frog doesn't jump out. We're slowly kind of like being edged out of representation, but in the end we still get boiled. What's one thing you think that Asians like enjoy about kind of being under the radar? I mean, we have we have so many things to do. Like in our daily lives, we yeah, have a lot we of have errands. So many things to focus on. We are super materialistic. We get too bogged down with this stuff. We kind of like tend to forget that we are not the only minority group in this country. Like Asians, if it doesn't affect us, we kind of like don't care about it. One of the pros is that you kind of feel like you're more connected to your like little subculture. It does make it easier for us to kind of just slip by. And I'm fine living under the radar too because like in the like huge news stories you don't really see like an Asian headlining the news so I'm really fine with it. Personally I'm not that under the radar but I know when I can be like in a situation. You know how to use it. I know how to uh, use it. What, when the cops come? Like racial profiling is a thing. It's not that I don't care what happens around here. We we're brought up to kind of just take the back seat. Our parents like they encourage us to like oh just like Easy life, just like lay low on the radar and then you'll have a good life. One of the good things about being underneath the radar is you can just focus on your own life and your boyfriend and your girlfriend. Is that selfish? It is kind of selfish for our generation to think like that because, you know, what about the other minorities? They want to focus on their boyfriend, girlfriends and dogs too. So if it affects them, it affects us all. I just think it's selfish if you only care about yourself and you're like, I don't need to get involved. My parents, they can think whatever they want. But for me, I'm thinking about the future for my kids. I want them to have a voice. In order for them to have a voice, I need to speak I need to speak up. Your kids, your kids' kids, they're all gonna be living in America if you choose to live here. And it's something that you gotta kind of I guess build the path for them so life is easier. It's like that mindset of like why should we care if you don't care about us? I think you should care because we're all humans on this earth. It's not a correct mindset. I think it's uh, kind of like uh, disgusting even uh, because like this is an interconnected country. This is an interconnected world. You're never gonna like live in isolation. If you're just letting like these change makers do their thing, how are you being a productive member of society? So what do you think are some things that could be done? Get involved as much as you could in any sort of like volunteer, service community, anything. I think it's exactly what he just said. Just get involved as much as you possibly can. And it does not matter about which way. It doesn't matter because it doesn't matter what you're saying as long as you make yourself heard. Don't be afraid to speak up. You know, don't don't feel like you have to stick with the stigma. Sharing your story with others, but doing so in a respectful way and also listening to other people. Just start conversating with other races a lot more. Include them and then as that happens, you guys will appear a lot more social. I think it would help for people to get out of their bubble and not only hang out with other Asians, especially other Asians of the same race. Get involved, like get aware, like educate yourself. I think opening up is definitely key. 
I think um, is having the confidence to stand up for your own beliefs, whatever that is. Now the next time that you actually have something on Facebook, on Twitter, where you're just like, that person's a moron, go out and engage with someone that shares a similar belief, try and hash that out in person. Ooh, you are daring Asians to do something that they hate doing, which is take f activism outside of Facebook. It's easy to have an opinion, but it's hard to say like, I need to do something with this opinion. Like the least you can do is just like have a conversation with your friends. You guys should share this video and have this conversation. I was just about, about to go get like a donut and I stopped to do this. So I think, I think everybody can get off their for a moment. Go more into media, go more into the arts, show the world that we're not just like, foreign doormats. And it becomes reframing these things as basic human decency and standards that we hold ourselves to voluntarily, not because someone else has a gun to our head. Do you think it would help to see more crazy like ratchet Asians in media? Hell yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, more ratchet, could I say that? Probably yeah. not. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. We should. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, to some degree, just the controllable level. Oh no, not really. <laughs> no. No. I think we have enough of that already. <laughs> you know, it, it might it might actually work. I definitely think you need it. I think when I saw Rich Ryan now came out, I was like, yes, it's showing other Asians like they don't have to stick with their like stereotype. I don't think like ratchet is maybe like the right description. I think definitely like more like outspoken Asian people. More Asians should be what they themselves want to be rather than what the culture expects them to be. The ideal situation actually would be having really positive role models in every industry. That way, whatever it is that is your ambition, you see someone that you can look up to in a positive light. Do you volunteer to be that crazy ratchet Asian? Yeah. Hell yeah. No. I need to go to law school, no. Yeah. Nah, it's just not me, you know? <laughs> well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I can't do that, I mean. I don't have it in me, but there's probably people out there who are like, who are like that, yeah. Optimistic, pessimistic about the, the future and why? Optimistic. Definitely optimistic. Optimistic. Optimistic, but it's like 52% to like 48. <laughs> I'm not really optimistic. I'm a little pessimistic. Although there's a lack of tragedy, I guess, in the past century, it's the most okay to be racist towards Asian people. Like doing like a, like a black accent will always be offensive, but doing like an Asian or an Indian accent will never not be funny. Asians are f***ed. Yeah, like the younger generation like we were talking about, they're kind of getting the ability because they're already kind of established, they don't need to worry about surviving as much. So they have the freedom now to engage in these conversations. The fact that we have several people in the House and Senate that are Asian American, that is a very good sign, it's a bright sign for our future as not just Asian Americans, but as an American. I'm actually from Hungary and I got an excuse for myself, but you guys, you guys who are American citizens, you guys ought to do more than this. Come on guys. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that episode of Fun Bros on the Street. Today, I was asking people if they felt Asians were involved in mainstream national issues in America. I do think that the common thread at the end of the day was that a lot of people know that Asians should be more outspoken and definitely change the way that we are perceived in American society on a widespread scale. People were a little bit intimidated about what it would take to make the change that they want to see happen. At the end of the day, I would just like to say that you personally may not want to be the person who stands out, but definitely at the very least, try to support those who do. In the comments section below, make sure you let me know how you respond to my questions today, as well as any other thoughts that you might have on this issue. This is David Fung from the Fun Bros. I'm in New York City, and until next time, thank you again for watching. I'm out, peace. The reason you have to be optimistic is that if you were born at any moment in human history and you didn't know what you were gonna be born at, ethnicity, gender, you would pick 2017. You can hold that in head with the very diametrically opposed idea that this is still shitty, that we can do better, that we have to do better, but that we are still progressing and that's something worth hanging, you know, hanging our hats on.